Washbuck. When it starts kind of raining, if it starts raining, shut up the duckies and the bunnies and go inside, okay? I don't know, it's supposed to rain. Just a little bit, but it might not for a while. Can you go listen to it? Thank you. Elston, moving south at 25 miles per hour. What is it? Hazard, 60 miles the, per um, hour in gusts and heavy-sized hail. Okay. Source, radar indicated. Impact, expects damage to roofs, siding, and trees. Okay, hang on. Well, I was headed outside for just a second and we'll still probably go outside. I mean, if there is a severe thunderstorm coming, I will have to probably go close the greenhouse. The app that I have on my phone to check the weather and to follow the weather really closely is called Radar Omega. I have no affiliation with them, but I truly love this radar. It has brought me a lot of peace of mind because if you don't already know, I have some decently severe weather anxiety. Ooh, that's a good storm. <laughs> See how it's moving? Yeah. It's going to be, I think it's mostly hitting the top part of the county. Where are we? Way down here. One of the issues is our county is so big um, that our re our weather radio will go off when stuff is a very healthy distance away. Which I personally do not mind. I would rather know about it and have it not come and not affect us than not know about something that does affect us. Everybody say goodbye to Titus. We've sold Titus. We've got some really exciting things on the horizon. So Titus' services are no longer needed. How are you feeling over there? Hmm? Yes, Farrell, you are the best. You're the best, you're gonna stay, don't worry. Yeah, and you're a good boy. It's not that you're not a good boy. But today is all about squash. I'm definitely going to start out this video by saying that I am no squash expert. Actually, I have had very terrible success with, with squash in years past where they just get diseased, but more often than not, before the disease gets them, the bugs come for them and we just, we barely get anything. And so people have asked me, Heather, what the heck are you doing with all of that squash? Because I've planted a ton of it. <laughs> And the reason I have planted a ton of it is because it usually dies. I usually don't get much out of it before the bugs come and kill it all. And so the idea behind planting all of the squash was just to get what I can for as long as I can. And I never really anticipated that I'd be still getting squash and having plants this healthy for this long. Truthfully, I don't know the secret behind this. I don't have some kind of magical uh, secret that makes the plants as healthy. I know in a lot of areas summer squash can be Kind of it's like a joke. It's like a running joke that you get eventually with one zucchini plant You get so many zucchinis that the entire neighborhood is tired of zucchinis by the end of the year But in places where there's squash bugs and squash vine borers and super hot humid places We really don't get to Understand the full scope of that concept or that meme because again things just die in the south things like this don't last very long I think t Kentucky technically isn't the south, but it's certainly hot enough to be the south. And we have a lot of the bugs that the south has. I think the difference for me this year is growing hybrids, honestly. And these hybrid squash, I think I purchased them because they were resistant to things like powdery mildew, but they seem to be genuinely resistant to the pests as well. Here we go. I knew that there was something hiding in here. I know. I know bees. Thank you for your services. So I've never had the luxury of really needing to think about what am I doing with all of this squash because I've never had so much that I don't know what to do with it. So that is happening for me this year. So I'm learning right along with you guys what to do with all of this squash. But I think that I've got some ideas that maybe you haven't thought of. You certainly have ideas that I haven't thought of so we can learn together. Those first two squash that I picked were a scallop variety of squash. And this one is a delicata. This one, this particular plant has not been super healthy, but it's been producing very well regardless.
one of the things that I like to do that I've heard is good to do anyways is to prune the plants for airflow in this greenhouse. Look, that's a squash bug. In this greenhouse, airflow can be an issue, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to grow plants that had a resistance to powdery mildew. I think that this plant has been kind of battling a little bit of powdery mildew ever since it was real small, but it seems to be powering through, which I think is sort of the point of hybrids. But still, it's a good idea when you have the time when you're harvesting to take off any leaves that are apparently sick. You don't want the plant to be putting any energy into supporting these leaves when they're really not bringing much back to the plant at all. And in doing that, in theory, we will have extended the life of the plant as well as the amount of harvest that we should get out of it. I have noticed that this particular variety, or at least this plant, has dealt with a little bit of pollination issue. There's a lot of bees down on the other end over on that scallop squash, but they don't seem to make it over here as readily. But that's okay. We've still gotten a lot more squash out of this one plant than I really did expect, so everything really from here on out is bonus. So funny story, this plant right here, I was calling a bush style sugaretti spaghetti squash for probably about four weeks on our garden tour. And that is not what this is. This is actually a round zucchini. By the time I figured out what this plant actually was, the zucchinis that were on them were actually pretty big. They were, I don't know, baby head size for lack of a better comparison. And I expected them to be pretty tough. I expected them to be essentially inedible, but they were not. They're actually, were pretty amazing. I feel like they'd be the perfect stuffing zucchini. This one is pretty small, but it's still gonna be super delicious. So I did succession sow some more squash in this same row. And I had forgotten the type that I put in. It looks like I put in actually a couple different types. This is another delicata squash, same seed as what's growing in on the end over there. And this one doesn't have those powdery leaves. So that does make me think that that one on the end is experiencing a little bit of disease. See with this one too, they do have a little bit of a spiky tendency to their leaves and stems. So I'm going to be a little bit careful with my hands. I will get a little bit itchy if I am in the squash too much. But I am going to come through here and just take out the diseased leaves, just like we did before. And there's a bee in that one. This plant over here is another scallop squash. And something really cool that I've noticed in growing the scallop squash is each individual plant almost has like a signature fruit that it produces. So this fruit it is a really cool shape. It's got more bulbous on the bottom and very round lobes on the top. Very likely all of the fruit that comes off of this plant is going to look like this. And I've noticed that each scallop squash has a little bit of a different look to it. See, this is off of one of my real big plants that's over here. These are pretty uniform, I guess, in depth. The lobes are right down the middle and they're nice and round. This one is more like a saucer cloud. And then the plant right next to it produces these kinds of fruits. They almost have this double peak pattern to them. Isn't that cool? The subtle differences for some reason are making me incredibly happy. So from what I've heard, there's a lot of people that don't like the patty pan squash, the scallop squash when they get this big. They say that it gets a little bit tough. Some people even say it gets a little bit stringy. That hasn't been our experience. The seeds on the inside might get a little bit bigger, but they're still really soft and we don't mind the texture of them. Now we are people that like things like okra. So like a slimy mucilage seed doesn't bother us and especially when cooked they are very edible and we find them palatable so we don't mind letting our squash get a little bit bigger I probably wouldn't want it to get bigger than this but if I put my fingernail into the skin on the surface my fingernail goes in very easily which means that the skin is still nice and tender and that's all I need Whew. another thing that you can't tell on camera, especially because the sun isn't out today, but it's incredibly hot in this greenhouse. And normally, um, in years past when I have planted squash, it's probably right around 85 degrees or above, my squash really starts to suffer in the heat. Let's see exactly how hot it is in here. It says 89, so I guess I'm being a little bit of a wimp. 
but yesterday I was in here while the sun was out and the temperature inside the greenhouse was 105 and everything in here was perky and lively. Nothing looked wilted and I think a lot of that is due to the fact that it is inside of this greenhouse. There is the shade cloth over top which absolutely helps but also the greenhouse kind of retains some humidity and I have read a bunch of times in order to get greenhouse plants through a really hot spell you should actually run your irrigation to increase the humidity in the space because humidity helps plants get through the heat that's something I learned last year during the drought that we had we had so much drought and so much heat it was super oppressive so we're coming into July and we're finally starting to get temps consistently in the 90s which I am so grateful that it has been a mild late spring early summer thus far we have desperately needed it hello handsome just gonna double check the radar clouds are getting a little bit darker and I know that my kids as well as myself get a little bit nervous when you know the weather radio goes off it's never it's something about that noise that and the tornado siren that they test in the middle of our town every Tuesday it just it triggers something that is not fun to experience the radar is showing something that I am seeing it's getting pretty dark and ominous in the east but over here we're gonna be fine for quite a while yet because of the heat, I really don't like to close the greenhouse if I don't have to. I feel like even though the plants do well with heat and humidity to a point, there absolutely has to be an upper limit. And I think the airflow is also really important. And it's hard to kind of get in a space like that. There's got to be a balance between the humidity loving part of the plant and the part of the humidity that can actually help spread disease. So. I'm gonna try to keep the walls open to the greenhouse as long as possible today, but I might have to close it later. So we've come out to the lane to check on the squash that are growing out here. I apparently put a couple bush style varieties of something down here. I'm hoping that this is the sugar ready spaghetti squash variety that I thought I had placed in the greenhouse. I know I put that somewhere. I just, I haven't found it yet. I did a very terrible job actually marking where I planted stuff this year. And it's not because I didn't try. I actually have a whole computer program that helps me plan the garden. But my initial planting of everything, at least out here, got eaten down by some kind of pest. And so when it came to replanting, I just threw in whatever seeds I had. This seed right here is actually seed that I saved from last year. This is tromboncino squash. And these guys haven't even flowered yet, but look at the look at the baby squash on there. See how big this is? This has not been pollinated yet. These flowers have not opened. And that's one of the amazing things about this tromboncino squash is you apparently don't even really need to have adequate pollinators in order to get something pretty substantial off of that. Those will get probably about twice that big before the flowers open and the plant actually pollinates that fruit. And I have found that the tromboncino squash is really resistant to bugs and the like. And so this is a really great homestead heirloom to grow if you love both summer squash and winter squash. Because we can do the same fingernail test that we did inside the greenhouse on this squash. And as long as our fingernail can depress into the squash pretty easily, it's probably pretty tender and pretty delicious. You can treat it just like a zucchini. But last year I grew tromboncino squash actually in the greenhouse and we grew them out to maturity and they're like huge butternut squash and you can use them just like butternut squash. I still have some that I harvested in November inside the house that I think pretty soon are probably just gonna dry out. I was sort of waiting to see how long they would store but I imagine at this point they're probably starting to dry out on the inside. Maybe we'll cut one of those up later and see how it's doing. This here though is what I think is a standard size spaghetti squash and I have seen a couple different bugs on here. Here's one. This is a squash bug. And here's another one right here. So what I do really is when I'm out here I just squish them. They kind of smell like cloves and soap. It's the most bizarre thing. Like it's not exactly offensive. It's kind of like a stink bug but almost sweeter so I don't mind squishing them. <laughs> I found that that's the fastest way that I can personally take care of them, but you can also drop them in a small jar of soapy water and that will take care of them just fine. I'm actually trying to see if any of them have laid eggs. 
so I can show you what squash bug eggs look like. But essentially, it's like a small cluster of copper colored eggs underneath the leaves. And when they hatch, they hatch into these little nymphs. And the nymphs, you saw that the adult was brown and crusty and looked like a sink bug. The nymphs, we had one that was kind of still immature in the greenhouse, but they are almost a blue-gray color with black legs. And those little guys will actually suck the moisture out of the plant. And that's really what does it in, is their plant isn't able to keep up with that moisture. And you'll see the plant where maybe ordinarily it wouldn't be wilty during the day, it'll get real wilty because it's, it's suffering. It doesn't have what it needs because the bugs are taking it all. So it's good to get rid of those guys. Another major pest that we deal with here on our squash plants is called the squash vine borer. And arguably that pest is way worse than the squash bugs. I think the squash bugs get a lot of attention, but they're very easy to see. Their egg clusters are very easy to see. And in my opinion, they're very easy to remove. The squash vine borer, in contrast, is this moth. It's very beautiful. You actually might think it's poisonous. For all I know, maybe it is poisonous if you ate it, but it's not like it's gonna bite you. It kind of looks like a cross between between a wasp and a moth if you're not really looking at it super closely but essentially it is a moth and it lays this little tiny kind of flat round copper egg usually on the stem of the plant and it doesn't lay them in a cluster so they're not as easy to pick out and so you can try to look for the eggs on the stem but you know eventually when the plants get so big inevitably you're gonna miss some of those eggs and what's gonna happen is the eggs will hatch into a little tiny larva that actually bores into the stem of the plant and while it's in there it's eating and eating and growing and growing kind of like the hungry hungry caterpillar it's going to cut off the water supply to the plant and the squash vine borer unfortunately really likes to lay its egg right at the base of the plant and so essentially I mean if your water is cut off way down there everything else up above will die. So I actually got a little bit of a video of squash vine borer eggs in my last garden tour and I'll put a little clip of that in here and what I did was I came back with a little bit of BT which is bacillus thuringiensis, and that's a bacterium that is toxic in so many ways to all larval forms of insects, and it essentially just stops their metabolism. From what I hear, they just kind of feel full and stop eating, and when you stop eating, you stop growing and eventually die. So I sprayed that, focusing on the base of the plant and the rest of the stem, and when it does rain, I will have to reapply. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to kind of grow squash in two separate places. But when it's outside, it's subject to the dew and the rain, and those, both of those things will wash off our natural pest prevention methods. So by growing in the greenhouse, if and when I do spray anything in there organically, it won't wash off, which was really awesome for us last year when we were dealing with tomato hornworms. I had a lot of tomatoes in the greenhouse and I was able to sprinkle on the powder form of BT and I only had to do that one time. It was glorious. So we'll see how long these last. I really am very cautiously optimistic. I might get a spaghetti squash or two out of these three plants, but I'm gonna try real hard to get a few more than that out of this. Okie okay, dokie, okay. so I'm in the middle of making dinner now and I'll let you know what I'm doing with the squash tonight. But I do wanna cut into this bad boy. This is a tromboncino that we harvested last November. And on the surface, everything looks really normal. There's nothing wrong with this. I can feel that maybe there is a little bit of hollowing on the inside, which can happen. Sometimes squash will mold and you'll obviously see it on the outside, but a lot of times they'll actually just start to hollow out. The seeds in the tromboncino are only in this bottom bulbous portion here. The whole rest of this is just beautiful orange flesh. So I'm actually going to cut up here so we can see if there's any hollowing up on this side. See in there, it is starting to hollow out a little bit, but I'm not sure if you can see. There we go. It's still quite juicy and I mean, it smells amazing. It smells exactly like a butternut. And what I'm gonna do with these, since I have tromboncino growing outside right now, is I'm actually gonna cut these up and freeze dry them. I could also stick them in the freezer, and these are gonna make really great butternut soups when it is soup season. It's not exactly soup season right now because it's so hot outside, but the gloomy rainy weather has had me making soup for dinner tonight, and I am putting squash in the soup. 
So obviously there's a whole internet out there where you can Google recipes for squash and find lots and lots of recipes. But I think part of being a homesteader and growing your own food is trying to think outside the box and trying to be innovative so that you can make the most of what you grow and we have been really trying intentionally in the last little little bit to eat at least one farm raised item per meal and I've been trying to go above and beyond that and so what I've been doing is kind of thinking about all right I've got lots of squash this is kind of abnormal for me what can I do with this that maybe would replace something that I haven't been as successful growing. So in the last couple years, I really have not had very much luck with carrots. We've had rodents get to them, we've had germination issues, and honestly, especially this, this scallop squash right here, there's a firmness and a sweetness and an earthiness that is a very, very similar to a carrot. So I am actually making a soup tonight even though it's not soup weather, and I'm dicing up a couple of these delicata squash, and I'm gonna throw them in right at the very end because squash is not as firm as carrots, and we're gonna be having it in our soup. We've been throwing squash in all manner of casseroles. We've had many a homestead casserole that we have served at home and brought to others. We have taken slices of squash, so this is, I'll put this back together, but we've taken small little slices of squash and put them on egg sandwiches, and that's been really good. This is an example of what I was talking about in the greenhouse, where the seeds inside of this delicata, they are developing, but they're very, very soft, and I'm just gonna leave them like this for the soup. If you didn't like that or you didn't prefer that texture, you could just take a spoon and scrape those seeds into the compost, and that would be just fine. Initially, when I started growing the patty pan squash, I had put out in our community tab on YouTube, like, help, I don't know what to do with this. And a lot of people were telling me that they use these types of squash just like they would use any other zucchini or summer squash. I have had and made pickled summer squash. It's very delicious. It was actually a sweet pickle. It was like a bread and butter pickle, and it was really good. I will absolutely be making more of that this year. I think something like these scallop squash really lend better to acting more like a root vegetable or like a cucumber because there really is a good amount of firmness in this squash and it has a really smooth and buttery type texture that I think sometimes is lacking in things like zucchini. I actually prefer this texture to, to zucchini. I find it just has a better bite and a better flavor. It's almost sweet, like it's kind of apple-y, if that makes sense. When it dawned on me that I could and probably should be thinking outside the box and figuring out what I couldn't grow as well and what I could grow pretty well and how I could switch things up, it was really a game changer in understanding how to use the food that we grow here because sometimes that can be a hard thing. You really wanna be able to grow things that you and your family are going to eat and figuring out how to use them. If you're only using recipes that you find online, you might be a little bit disappointed, but think about kind of the taste and texture of whatever it is you're growing like squash and what is very similar what you might not be growing like I'm not growing potatoes this year not on purpose I have a really small little patch of volunteer potatoes and I saw a recipe the other day for squash au gratin and it looks delicious and that's going on the meal plan soon also too it's not a problem if you are just overwhelmed with whatever it is and you turn around and just feed it to your animals. As long as, in my opinion, as long as that nutrition is going somewhere and it's feeding something, even if it's your compost, I think that's totally valid. It's just nutrition transfer at that point and it's not like it's lost or wasted. So hope that gives you some, some comfort. So while we are in the growing season and we still have plants that are producing fresh squash, we are going to be eating the squash fresh. But I am still going to be preserving the excess because honestly, I don't know how long these squash plants are gonna last and I want their fruits to really extend as far into the season, as far into next year as possible. Some of my kids are already getting really tired of squash. They genuinely almost come to tears every time dinner has a little bit of squash in it. So as we all know, or as I think a lot of us know, you can make zucchini bread. You can actually make zucchini bread out of really any type of summer squash. 
So that's kind of the plan for these little individual portions. I had kind of hoped that these would come out in like individual cakes that I could vacuum seal, but that doesn't look like the case. So I'm just gonna be sticking these in a Mylar bag and I'll be pulling out as much as I need for a recipe. And I actually was thinking too that I could probably pretty well hide this white, this is the scallop squash. I could pretty well hide that inside rice. So I could sprinkle a little bit inside the rice cooker with a tad more water than it would take to cook the rice and get some hidden nutrition in there. I also freeze dried some bee balm in this batch as well. And it is still so super colorful. I am gonna get the freeze dryer going with a whole bunch of cubed summer squash and some of that tromboncino to put away for, again, when the squash isn't growing, which as far as a tromboncino goes, that's probably gonna be going all year long. So I think we are going to have plenty of squash for probably more than just the next year. Let me know down in the comment section if you have a favorite squash recipe or a favorite way that you and your family uses squash. I'm sure we will all be down there in the comments scouring for ideas. I recently heard about, I haven't researched into this, making kind of like a pineapple, a pseudo pineapple out of overripe zucchini. That's something I'm going to research as soon as I'm done recording this video. If you've done that, please report down in the comment section. I'm really interested to see how that worked out for you. If you're brand new into food preservation and you want to learn more about how all of that works, I've taken a couple different videos on my steam canner, pressure canning, and our freeze dryer, which are really the main ways that we preserve our food here. So if one of these videos applies to you or appeals to you, go ahead and give it a click and I'll see you guys again soon.